In this video, I will be providing you with a few ideas on how you can build a garage foundation on the site of a sloping hillside. And I will not be providing you with any structural engineering information. These are only examples for how something like this can be built. And another thing I will not be providing you with in this video, but I might make another video on that, will be how all of the structural rebar can be laid out for something like this. Now let's go ahead and start with the project completed and then I will break it apart step by step and then put it back together. And this seems to be a pretty good way to teach people how to build stuff. So let's go ahead and get started by taking away the driveway and the garage slab and then we will take a look at the fill dirt or should I say fill soil. Now this would be an approved fill. I do not recommend that you fill this up with the dirt you dug out for the footings because because over time it could settle and provide you with a hollow spot underneath the garage slab. So keep that in mind when you're building your project. And now let's go ahead and take away the fill to give you an idea of what the soil might look like in here. Now keep in mind that you're not going to be shaping the soil like this. I did it as a way to make the design process a little easier and so that you could see the footings step down. But more than likely the inside of this is going to match the existing slope with some exceptions to the area around the sides of the footings where you might need to shape them for a variety of different reasons. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this. Next up, we will be using some gravel that will go over a pipe that's going to have some holes in it to allow any water that gets behind the retaining wall here to drain through the gravel and into the pipe and then out of one of the walls and safely away from the building. Now keep in mind that this outlet for the the perforated pipe can go at either end or located somewhere along the wall if it needs to be located in a different spot. Now let's go ahead and remove the stem walls so that we can take a better look at the footings and how they step down. Let's go ahead and remove the footing so that we can take a look at the soil and I left the outline of the footing here again to give you a better idea of how the footing is going to step down and now that you have a pretty good idea how to take it apart, let's go ahead and put it back together. And even though I am providing you with a view of the footings, it is going to be a lot better if you pour the footings and the stem walls at the same time. However, you are not going to be able to pour the footings, the stem wall, and the garage slab at the same time unless that's some type of a miracle. But again, I'm not going to count that out. If you can do it, that would be the best way. And let's go ahead and take a look at how I center the stem wall over the footings and in my example here I'm using an 8 inch wide stem wall and 18 inch by 18 inch footings. So each one of these footings is going to be 18 inches wide and 18 inches deep. And to give you a better idea what that's going to look like let's go ahead and take away the soil give you an idea of how the footings are shaped so that the rebar can come down and work its way all the way around the entire perimeter of the garage foundation and that will also work inside of the stem walls also. Another view there the other side and I should also point out that I have extended the footing on this side only because there's going to be a lot of weight on this particular retaining wall. However, since I'm not an engineer, I'm not about to suggest that this needs to be done for this particular project because the garage slab is going to be helping us tie all of these walls together and prevent them from moving. Unlike a regular retaining wall that would be built by itself and it wouldn't have a bunch of rebar going through through the walls into the concrete slab and tying everything together. Definitely something else to consider. Now let's go ahead and put the soil back in and then install the drain pipe. And even though I have the gravel running at an angle, you can always raise it up as you're backfilling to create a square or even a larger area. And again, this would depend upon a variety of different situations, just like the additional footing on the front of this wall 
you might need to put a little more gravel in here or even another pipe if these walls are going to be a little higher. And I don't think I mentioned that this front wall is five feet tall. So with that said, let's go ahead and put in our fill and pour our concrete slab for the garage. And I would imagine you could pour the slab and the driveway at the same time for something like this. And if you are going to be framing walls on top of the stem walls, then you might need some anchor bolts. And don't forget to make sure that your anchor bolts are installed at the right height. And don't forget to backfill all of the areas around the retaining walls. And this brings us to the end of the video. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. And if I end up receiving at least 20 different comments, I will go ahead and make another video on how I would install the rebar. But keep in mind that this might not be how a structural engineer might require it to be done.